All right, let's try this problem. We have this sign that we're going to hang from this board, and then uh, we're going to attach a hinge here so it's able to move up or down, and then we're going to hang it by a wire, by a, by a rope, so that it's in a state of equilibrium. So the question is, what is the tension here in the rope? All right, so we're going to set up this problem. We're going to, um, step one is going to go ahead and draw our free body diagram. So here you can see the, the board is going to have a weight pulling it down like this. Okay, and since we already know the weight, I'm just going to plug in the number here. So 200 newtons going down. Uh, there's also going to be a force on the end from this weight that's going to pull it down. Um, that's going to be, let's say, 500 newtons. Okay, then we have this wire, this rope is going to have a tension pulling this way. Okay, so we'll just simply call that T. Um, anything else? Uh, oh, the hinge itself. So the hinge is holding it up. And notice the hinge is going to be, since this is pulling to the left at an angle, this is going to have to push at a right at an angle as well. So we can just call this force of the hinge going this way. All right, so the next step is going to be to go ahead and set up our summations. So the sum of uh, f in the x direction. And in fact, before we do that, we should break these down into its pieces, right? So actually, maybe I'll do that up here. So if here's our board, just draw this out again. So our fh is going to have an f our hinge, I'm just going to call it H. We're going to have a hinge force in the Y direction and a hinge force in the X direction. Then we're going to have that 200 coming down this way. And this one's going to be 500 going down this way. And then the TY, the tension, we're going to have a T in the Y direction going this way. And this one's going to have a T in the X direction going that way. So once you break it down to our pure x, y, it makes our summations a little bit easier. So in the x direction, uh, notice we just have these two, right? hx going this way and tx going this way. And since we know that has to equal zero, that basically tells us that hx has to equal tx. Those have to be in a nice equilibrium state. All right, when we sum up our f's in the y direction, this one, now we have our HY going up. We have our TY also going up. We have our 200 going down. And we have our 500 going down. Okay, and that's going to have to equal zero. So notice the sum of these two have to balance out the 700 going downwards. Let's write that HY plus ty should equal 700 newtons. Okay, then the next step is we're going to sum up, uh, not f, our torques. Okay, sum up our torques. So remember, you do want to find your pivot point. And again, there's uh, usually a few obvious choices, the hinge, the center of mass of the board, or the end over here. Because we're looking for tension, and we don't know the force of the hinge, we want to cancel out the force of the hinge. So to do that, we're going to choose our pivot point to be here. Because when we do our hinge torque, since the distance is zero, because we're right at that same location, there's not going to be a torque there. So hinge torque would be zero. So now we're just going to look at our other torques. Actually, let's look at this one up here. So again, you have to define a direction clockwise is positive or counterclockwise is positive it's kind of up to you i think this time i'll choose counterclockwise to be positive and in fact i think that's the standard like if you just said which one should you choose usually they'll say counter but honestly it does not matter so for this problem i'm going to choose that to be positive so we'll go ty since that's going counterclockwise up this way right that's going to be positive so ty times this length which was two meters so, and then we'll make our clockwise negative clockwise torques so this one would be 200 clockwise times one meter 
right? It's halfway, so this is two, this should be one. So it's gonna be 200 times one minus, and then this one is gonna be 500 times this length, which is two meters. So it's gonna be 500 times two. And then again, that should be equal to zero. Okay, so notice right away, we can go ahead and solve for our ty. So we have ty times two should equal 200 times one minus 500 times two. So that's gonna equal, what's that? 1,200. So that gets us a ty equal to 600 newtons. Okay, it's not our answer, that's our ty value. So if we go back to our picture over here again, remember this is our tension going up this way. Um, let's see what I have space up here. Little triangle, right? So here's our tension going up this way. Um, this was 30 degrees. This would be Ty and this would be Tx. Okay, so hopefully you can see Ty is equal to T sine 30. So in this problem, we figured out 600 is equal to T sine 30. And remember, 30 is just a half. Sine 30 is just a half. So therefore, T should be equal to, let's write it out, 600 divided by sine 30 equals 1,200. Okay, so that would be our answer for T. Um, so I know I didn't ask you this, but could we find the hinge force, the force in the hinge? So why don't you take a couple minutes and see if you can continue this problem and solve for the hinge force, and then I will come back and solve it. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to solve this one. Um, again, if you look, what we're looking for is the force of the hinge right here. Um, to get this, if we can find the two components, the HY and the HX, we can then find this. If you notice here, we derive this where HX has to be equal to TX. These two forces have to be in balance. So since we know the tension, we can now find the hinge in the X direction. And then this equation right here, this gives us the relationship between HY, TY. So we can find HY that way. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find HX first. Actually to do that, we're first gonna find TX. So if you look back here at our triangle, we just found T that was 600, right? And we just found this that was, um, wait, T was 1200 and this was 600. So if we know those two, we can use our Pythagorean theorem, right? So 1200 squared minus 600 squared, square root that guy. And that gives us 1039, right? That's 1039 here. Let's just make it 1040 for simplicity. Okay, that's gonna be our um, tension in the, oops, I just messed that up, didn't I? Flip those two. So that's 1040 and this is 600. There we go. All right, so anyways, um, so we now know that HXN is 1040. Okay, our HX is gonna be equal to 1040 as well. Uh, we can also now solve for HY here. Give myself a little bit of space. So we can say HY plus TY equals 700. HY equals 700 minus TY was 600. So HY must be 100. Okay, and hopefully that makes sense. In our picture, we had 700 going down. We found TY was 600. So to balance that out, we must have a 100 going up that way. Okay, so we got the two components. We got our HX, we got our HY. Here's our triangle here. HY was 100 going up. And this one was 
10 something, 1040. Because remember when you draw your vectors, we're going to go draw one, 1040, and then we're going to draw the tail, the tip of the second one, which is 100. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, let's go ahead and solve this. This is basically going to be about 1040, maybe a little bit more. Uh, let's go squared. Whoops. Plus 100 squared. Square root that. Come on, you can do it. Ten forty four. So basically the same thing. So that's gonna be the tension in the hinge or the force in the hinge. Ten forty four newtons. We should get that angle as well. It looks like it's gonna be about eighty five ish degrees. It's gonna be or not eighty five, about five ish degrees. Um, but you can go ahead and do it anyways. Inverse tangent of one hundred divided by ten forty gives me about five degrees, five point five degrees. Okay, and that would be the force of the hinge. All right, and that's how you solve that type problem.